Adrenal fatigue, disease or pseudoscience. That's what Training Peaks article is about that I'm going to talk to you about today. Um, yeah, if you are in the endurance world, you've definitely heard of adrenal fatigue. It seems to be what everyone's got and having. Um, even my friend, the jester, has talked about it openly. In fact, all of 2019, he definitely had something off where he wasn't able to finish a lot of races and not do the performances he used to do. And so this article in Training Peaks, pretty good article. You can find it on uh, Training Peaks. Put a link, link in the show notes, but it's also, I just put it here on my um, uh, Patreon account, kind of where I put my show notes and I share a lot of articles with my patrons. And it says, adrenal fatigue has become a popular diagnosis in recent years, but is it real? And, you know, they talk about John F. Kennedy and he had a lot of illnesses. And in 1960, he was going up against Richard Nixon and it had to do a, um, one of the first televised debates, I guess the first presidential televised debate. And it ended up, he looked great. Uh, Nixon was all sweaty and not looking very well. But on one of the secrets Kennedy had, and he hit it quite well, is he had Addison's disease, which is an adrenal uh, chronic endocrine disease. And um, it's basically the primary failure of the adrenal glands. Disease causes many systematic effects and is often fatal without supplementation or cortisol, which was synthesized in the late 40s. And so uh, <clears throat> Kennedy, one of the influence, one of the things that side effects or of the disease is that it gives you a suntan appearance so he looked a lot better on camera <clears throat> than nixon did adrenal insufficiency is very much a real and serious illness but it, it's exceedingly rare since 1998 <clears throat> another ailment of sorts has been entered the lexicon of the bears a resemblance to addison's disease but has much more nebulous history and has been a source of some controversy <clears throat> and you know it's kind of like this is interesting it says where did it occur and um this is about two decades ago, a chiropractor and naturopath first coined the term adrenal fatigue to identify below optimal adrenal function resulting from stress and to distinguish it from Addison's disease. And that's your key right there. A chiropractor, you know, neuro naturopath. Um, if you look at the history of that stuff, that's eh, pretty, pretty iffy at most, at best. Per the original definition, adrenal fatigue is said to be the result of repeated stress of daily life on the adrenal glands, resulting in an imbalance in the ability of the glands to produce suitable quantities of hormones. And so these, uh, you know, naturopaths and chiropractors basically are saying that, you know, you've got adrenal fatigue, but, you know, it's not even in the BAMC endocrine disorders found no substation in adrenal fatigue is an actual medical condition. And, you know, so it's kind of like, you know, the other one, Addison's, you can measure stuff and find out, wow, you're not producing these hormones. You definitely have this in other symptoms that you can actually, you know, look it up and use science and facts. Whereas with adrenal fatigue, it's like, like so many other new diseases, adrenal fatigue is defined in such a way to be very vague and apply to just about everyone. Consider a difference in the definition of Addison's disease with that of adrenal fatigue. Addison's disease is a disease characterized by progressive anemia, low blood pressure, great weakness, and bronze discoloration of the skin. Hence, that's why um, Kennedy looked like he was tan, hit the thing. is caused by inadequate secretion of hormones by the adrenal cortex. So that pretty much sums up what Addison's disease is. And those things are measurable. Anemia, obviously, you know, low blood cell, red blood cell count, low blood pressure, and then the bronze discolorization. And you can also probably measure those hormones they're pumping out. Adrenal fatigue, and as you can see here, it's got like a couple paragraphs um, of a definition. It says, you know, it's known as a syndrome that results when adrenal glands function below necessary level, most commonly associated with intense or prolonged stress. And, you know, that's definitely the ultra world. You may look and act relatively normal adrenal fatigue. It may not have any obvious signs of physical illness, yet you live with a general sense of unwellness, tiredness, or gray feelings. And, you know, it's just kind of life catching up. The symptom, on the other hand, is vague, nonspecific, and defined in such a way that it can apply to almost anyone on any given day. Medical disease has quantifiable symptoms that can be measured to both define the illness, low blood counts, altered vital signs, and explain it with hormone levels. And you just can't do that. But people like the adrenal fatigue diagnosis because it gives them an easy answer to what's ailing them. And, of course, you know, how is it treated? Um, it says physicians with symptoms... If you go to a phys physician with symptoms of adrenal fatigue, the physician is going to examine you, do some tests, and likely tell you that you are stressed. They might suggest that you modify your lifestyle in order to decrease the stress, perhaps by simply adopting better eating and sleeping habits. For most patients, however, this is extremely unsatisfactory. 
and that's the thing people go in there and they you know been reading about it and hearing about it and you know it's kind of like i want a disease i want something which is odd because you know i got diagnosed by three chiropractors chiropractors get in my head cardiologists that i had you know congestive heart failure i didn't want to believe it or accept it but now i have you know but that's identifiable an actual medical condition whereas it's adrenal fatigue you know it's just kind of just in your head it is a later part of the statement that really explains why adrenal fatigue has become so popular as an entity. Health experts who diagnose and treat adrenal fatigue may do so with a concoction of expensive supplements and all this stuff. People essentially pay millions of dollars a year for things because they are convinced by an unethical industry that they have a problem that does not exist. And then one doctor here, an endocrinologist in Denver, says that I have had a couple patients since they had adrenal fatigue and were, was pressured to treat them. I did ACTH stimulation tests determine adrenal function on both of them, and of course, they were normal. Some of these require a simple answer for whatever ails them and an answer that involves no work on their part, such as becoming more physically active or, you know, taking care of themselves because, you know, it is something very prevalent in the ultra world, and I get it like because people train too well. They don't really train too much. They race too much, and they've got family and all this, and so it you know, they want an answer, but then if you kind of figure it out, like people with adrenal fatigue, there isn't really an answer because they can't really do much for you. And she says she wishes that more patients would take time to research the disease and more importantly, the cures that they're being sold. Most often, the only ones seeing any real benefits are the purveyors of the faux disease and the placebos being sold to them. Now, here's a great part that I like about this Training Peaks article. It says, what to do if you or someone you know experience the symptoms? As an athlete, you certainly have or will encounter other athletes who claim to have been diagnosed with adrenal fatigue. Rather than confronting them with science, it's more constructive to validate their symptoms because there's no doubt that the symptoms of fatigue and stress are real. Then you can help them guide to real sources of the problem. Are they overtraining? Are they having issues at work or personal life that may be impacting ability to sleep? Are they simply not eating well? And sometimes different endocrine systems are at play. Hypothyroidism, more common in women, may cause many of the same symptoms experienced as adrenal fatigue. And I have friends and people with that, and then you've got to take some thyroid medication, and that is a concern. If you or an athlete experience some of these symptoms and are entertaining this diagnosis as a path, my best answer is to not take the path. While adrenal fatigue may make you feel better in the short term by providing you with an answer to your symptoms, it will provide you with a cure. Until you resolve to uncover the real cause of your symptoms and do what is needed to resolve them, no pricey supplements will provide any fix other than depriving you of hard-earned income. And, you know, that's basically what I hear. You know, we often hear people, adrenal fatigue, and, you know, part of it, too, I think, in the ultra world is, you know, you go to the well too many times, and it's very difficult mentally and physically, and, you know, especially the mental part, and it may just be more that, you know, you just don't want to push yourself, and you, instead of admitting that mentally you just don't have it, which is basically what happened to me in 2019, I was, you know, you can kind of fall back on, oh, it's got to be a physical thing. And it's okay, you know, eventually, you know, you look at professional athletes, you only got a short career, and then that's it. You know, they often, I think, say that maybe you have like seven-year window of where you can really be at your uh, your best performances. Now, if you didn't compete when you're younger, that might be when you're in your 80s. But to continue high-level excellence for decades and decades, especially in the mental game, it's just not really possible, I don't think. So... Hopefully, you know, if you are suffering, you think you have this adrenal fatigue, maybe you'll reevaluate what you've been thinking and what you've been told and look for other solutions. And as always, stay healthy, be boring, not epic.